Hello everybody, I'm Wixie and welcome back to Love is Strange. In the last part we came to this shopping place and we got Rachel a feather earring which turned out to be a stupid decision because she already has a feather earring, why would she need another one? And I had to cut that video a little bit short because I had the hiccups really bad and I know that it can't have been fun if you did watch it to listen to somebody hiccuping and having to repeat words over and over again. So I'm here now, I'm recording another episode and we kind of cut off kind of halfway through but I feel like I cut it off as kind of in the best place I could. I mean if I could have gone for longer but it wouldn't have been fair for you to listen to me hiccuping. So we're just going to carry on from here. Hey look, here we are. Rachel, let's go with me in points. I look at the place she's indicating. It's the movie theatre. Does she want to see a film? Or, wait, I'm wrong. Rachel is pointing at the game set up in front of it. I have some spare change left over from my exorbitant purchase earlier. Want to give one of these a shot? I step closer and examine both cabinets. One of them is a claw crane and the other is a fortune telling machine. The claw machine is full of brightly coloured stuffed toys. I recognise a lot of beloved childhood favourites in there, but I'm pretty sure these things are designed to lose. The fortune telling machine contains an animatronic wizard that moves its arms up and down in a kind of creepy way. It looks old and I'm not sure it won't just eat the money. Let's, uh, um, I pick, let's do the fortune teller. Let's get our fortunes read. Rachel's smile is so bright it almost blinds me. This is my favourite thing in the world, Max. Michael the mystic always knows exactly what to say. Is that like a reference to Michael Co? Is that how you say it? Who worked on the game? I don't know. I can't remember exactly what job he does, but he worked on Life is Strange. I feel like that might be a reference. I don't know. Not the most magical name I've ever heard. Rachel laughs and flips me a quarter. Just give him a try. I take the coin and slide it into the slot. There's a satisfying thunk as it rolls back into the machine's ancient coin drop. A panel of buttons lights up. They're all star signs. Rachel reaches over to slap one before I can find the one I need. Virgo, right? How did you know? Rachel just laughs again as she hits another button and the animatronic staticky voice takes over. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do like a funny voice here. This is gonna probably be the worst thing you've ever heard, so I'll just apologise in advance. So, it's a fortune you want, is it? Oh god. <laughs> Listen closely. I know this is supposed to be like a man, but... Oh well. Destiny is not a matter of chance, it is a matter of choice. There is no such thing as coincidence. Wherever you end up is where you are meant to be. The glow of the mystic's crystal ball fades out as the recording comes to an end. There's a slip of paper sticking out of the slot at the bottom of the machine. I tug it free. It's just the same words printed out for reference, along with a row of supposedly lucky numbers. I fold up the piece of paper to put it in my pocket. So he's telling me to be brave, right? I know it probably seems super hokey to you, but I love this shit. I really believe in it. Rachel giggles. Look at this. I watch as she slides in another quarter and hits a bright red heart button. The machine stirs to life again. Before I can ask what she's doing, she hits the Virgo and Leo buttons. So, it's a love match you want, is it? I turn bright red. Rachel is clearly teasing, but at least she's, get she's getting me in on the joke. Virgo and Leo. An odd couple indeed. Many would wonder what it is you see in one another. You could not be more different. This potential weakness can be turned into a complementary strength. It is a matter of balance. But only if you recognise it. The light fades out again and we get another printout. Rachel reaches for it, smiling. Looks like we're not the greatest match. He was being downright hopeful. You should have heard the reaming he's given to me and Chloe. Complimentary strength. Rachel winks at me. It's like we talked about. Synergy, Max. Rachel reaches for a cigarette. I watch her light up and squint into the afternoon sun. We should get back to Blackwell soon. We don't want people to see us sneaking back and assuming something we... And assuming something we were... And assu 
that the word something is used twice and assuming we were up to something totally salacious right she gives me a nudge with one eyebrow raised of course she's being suggestive as a joke that's just her nature i think yeah uh that we should get back to blackwell i mean i think there's a bus stop close by Rachel and I chat about all sorts of things on the bus ride back. We have a lot in common when it comes to geeking out about photography at least. Even though she's more interested in being in front of the camera instead of behind it, Rachel really knows her stuff. When we get off the bus we pass by the parking lot. Rachel glances towards it, sees something and freezes. She groans. Great. Huh? She does not look happy. I follow her gaze towards an RV. I know the RV. Well, not personally. I just know that whoever lives in there used to sell weed to Chloe and Rachel, and it's probably where the Vortex Club stocks up on party supplies, quotation marks. It's really old looking, and a little creepy. I notice that there's a dog tethered up outside, sleeping on the asphalt. We both take a seat on the curb together. Rachel starts on another cigarette. I can't believe Frank still does business here. Frank? That's his name? Yeah. Um, why did you and Chloe find a new, uh, dealer anyway? I don't know anything about any of that stuff. I just know that they stopped seeing the RV guy and started buying from someone else about half a year ago. Because we broke up and it was fucking awkward and I never could figure out how to explain it to Chloe. So I just told her that we could get a better deal from someone else. Broke up? Wait. Frank was the person Rachel was talking about in the makeup store? Rachel's ex-boyfriend has been the guy in the RV all along. Yeah, we were... I guess we were dating. It seems like this might be an opening to finally appease a bit of my curiosity. Or my natural nosiness is taking over. Um... The RV creeps me out. Oh, Frank's not creepy, I promise. As sketchy as it all looks. He's not creepy. Well, I I used to feel that way. I don't know. I planned on Frank and the RV being my ticket to LA. Oh, so that's why... No, it's not why I dated him. Rachel runs her hand through her hair. When I started to like him, it was sort of like an accident. I didn't mean to, but it happened that way. And things used to be pretty good. But some people just aren't meant to be together. You know what I mean? I don't because I have no experience in the area, but I think so. Uh, what kind of person is Frank? Tattooed, always ready for a fight, and he reeks of axe. He sounds scary. He's not. He's a puppy dog. When he wasn't on drugs, anyway. Her expression falters. I, I liked him because he liked my Santa, Santa Monica dream. I love that song. Yeah? She smiles at me. He never made me feel like it was stupid or impossible. He was just totally in 100%. Or at least he said he was. He understood what I wanted. He said he was ready to support me in whatever way I needed. That meant a lot to me. But we didn't work out. We weren't really good for each other. He was a different person when he was on drugs. And I wasn't exactly an angel either. We didn't say a lot of hurtful shit to one another. I don't like to hold on to regrets, but maybe if I'd known beforehand how things were going to go, I might never have. Rachel shakes her head instead of finishing her sentence. I'm still going to try for my dreams, with or without him. Rachel's relationship with Frank sounds like it was really complicated. Uh, what's with the dog? That's Pompadour. Rachel's tired smile gets a little brighter. He's the one thing I miss unconditionally. I wish I could still see him without it being weird. But I don't think Frank would want to talk visitation rights. She laughs self-deprecatingly, self but she does seem a little wistful. I wonder how a girl like Rachel can wind up with a guy like Frank. But I've heard a lot of different things about Rachel too, and not all of them have been nice. I've spent the last the past year letting my assumptions about Rachel from my for, can I read? I've spent the past year letting my assumptions about Rachel form my impression of her without ever really trying to get to know her. I never thought for a second that I might be wrong. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge people by the rumours you've heard about them. If my horoscope is right, my life's about to change anyway. 
your horoscope is right because you're going to nail that modeling contract right i look at her sideways rachel looks a little weary the perfect image i'd had of, had of rachel it's not true to who she really is is it but that's not a bad thing i want to learn more about her i want to know everything about her it's a weird feeling i don't know if i've ever really had it before rachel's sitting right next to me but it's like i want to reach inside of her and see everything i want rachel to trust me is that weird am i weird to be honest max this has been my dream for my whole life and the stars have suddenly aligned just like that i should be happy i should be so fucking happy but now i just don't know i've been doubting everything about myself i want to go and never look back but i i think i get it or at least i hope i do um of course you're nervous rachel looks startled but i'm determined to say something useful what why wouldn't you be you said it yourself this is your dream rachel it's a big deal if you just headed into this blind that would be something to worry about but i think the reason you're hesitating is because you care so much that's why i'm so nervous about this contest because it's important to me but being nervous and scared doesn't mean i'm not going to try even if we don't win i know i did my best and i've got to share the experience with you i thank you max i needed that kiss 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 everyone's always telling me that there's no way i can fail at whatever i put my mind to and that's not true it's not even close to true even though i'm fine with letting people think that way you're only human like the rest of us i wonder why we've never really hung out alone before i'm glad we are now max rachel reaches out and grasps at my hands her squeeze is really strong i can feel my cheeks heating i can't believe that rachel amber is giving me this kind of attention it makes me feel special me too look at her blush she's so cute i'm so glad those three words don't seem like enough i'm a little sorry when rachel lets go of my hands look i've got to go see if i still have time to hand in an assignment but maybe i'll be able to catch you later okay i'm just gonna have a really quick drink hopefully i'll be able to cut it out but my editing software has been messing up lately and i haven't been able to crop footage so you'll probably just have to listen to me drinking sorry i wasn't planning on leaving the dorms at all tonight i was just going to brainstorm some ideas for our beach photo so sure i can't wait she's looking me right in the eyes her expression is so gentle and again i feel like i say this all the time but if my voice is hoarse it's because i am it's late at night and i'm tired and i don't really get a chance to record until late at night because nobody wants to watch a video where there's loads of background noise so i wait until my family are upstairs and i have some quiet time to record myself because i have a laptop but i record on my desktop computer which is downstairs so i wait till all my family are asleep until i record so that's why i always sound tired and plus i am constantly tired i can sleep for hours and just still wake up exhausted i still feel kind of warm all over and the feeling doesn't go away even when she's already left left so i just like spit everywhere the rest of the school day passes in a haze i spend most of it thinking about the photo shoot tomorrow and about rachel right as the final bell rings i get a text from her it meant a lot to me that you listened today i've never really admitted anything like that before 21 not even chloe thank you max i'll come knocking later you better answer heart i'm totally beat by the time i make it back to my room after tossing my bag onto the floor and checking in on lisa i sink into my i sink into my chair and pull out my laptop i know that rachel and i need to have our contest photo done and handed in on friday which means that tomorrow is really the only day we've got to take it and that's bad news for me because i'm quickly realizing that i haven't got a clue what the photo should look like i mean rachel is so gorgeous that taking a good photo of her would probably be as easy as pointing my camera in her direction and pressing the shutter but i don't want easy i want art i want this photo to fit the contest's theme i want it to express the bond between photographer and model 
Maybe I even want it to express the bond that's been growing between me and Rachel as people, not just as an artist and a muse. As if I'm anything close to an artist. Keep on dreaming, Max. I mean, technically, if you make art, you are an artist, even if you're even if you don't do it professionally. I scrolled through the folder of scanned photographs on my desktop, trying to view my own work with an objective eye. I paused on a photo of the ocean. I remember taking this. It's Elliott Bay, right in the heart of Seattle. The ocean looks grey and choppy, and through my lens, boring. Even the ferris wheel in the background doesn't liven up the photo. What kind of photographer can't even manage a decent shot of the ocean? I could ask Rachel to pose on the sand instead, or by the rocks, or I could even frame the shot up toward the cliff. But if I can't take a good photo, it won't matter where I point my camera. My stomach clenches as the anxiety swells. I take a long, slow breath and then close the folder. What I need isn't to remind myself of my mistakes. What I need is inspiration. I pull up a search engine and think for a moment before carefully typing... Richard Avedon plus Woman in the Mirror. I'm sorry if there's been no background sound until now either. I didn't realise that my audio was turned down. I don't know how loud my um, commentary is in comparison to the background noise. So if it's too loud, I'll know to have it quieter for the next video. The results load, my screen filling up with beautiful black and white images. I begin clicking through, trying to see what was so important to Rachel in this photo book. Each photo is carefully set up, framed and posed. Very few of the shots look candid. I've always noticed a really deliberate quality to Avedon's work. Victoria Chase's photos always make me think of his. She puts a lot of effort into getting things exactly right, a lot like he did. As for me, I'm almost the complete opposite. I like taking photos when people aren't necessarily, I can never say that word, ready for them. I've always loved the idea of capturing a moment just as it existed. But it feels like I'm seeing Avedon's work for the first time now. The woman in his photos are quaffed and composed and ready for the camera. But these photos feel incredibly honest too, as if Avedon has managed to unbury something that a less controlling photographer might never have found or even know about. The backgrounds complement the models but never overwhelm them. Sometimes they're just plain backdrops. These photos are all about the subjects, even when they're shot in extraordinary places. I recall what Rachel and I had talked about earlier today, about cameras and mirrors and how they reflect back what you put into them. It's a lot to think about. All at once I feel a little tired. I shut off my laptop and cross the room to sink down onto my bed. I wiggle around to get comfortable, then roll onto my side, peering into my phone. Rachel said she'd drop by sometime this evening. I wonder if I should touch base with her. Might like, touch. No, I'm not going to go there. Maybe I shouldn't bother her, though. I don't want her to think I'm annoying. She could easily have decided to hang out with one of her zillion other friends since I last talked to her. We're going to text her. Screw it. I decide to go for it and then immediately spend about two minutes wondering what to type before I realise that I'm overthinking it way too much. And again, really quickly, her diary, if you just want to see it, uh, will go from here. So what I do is I kind of click on it and then you can pause it and read it if you want to. Okay. I go for the default greeting. Hey. To my surprise, she actually responds right away. Yo. Better pick up all that dirty laundry because I'm hitting you up soon. Winky face. Well, that answers my question right away. I find myself smiling at my phone. Hey, I'm actually very tidy. You mean you didn't go to the Chloe school of move your panties where anyone can see them? OMG, no. God love her. I think we all love her, smiley face. Don't tell her that, she'll get all weird. It's true though. I'm grinning at my phone now. The casual flirting, I can't. When I was 13, I would have probably felt totally aghast at the idea of sharing my best friend with someone, but that was before I ever met Rachel. I remember what it was like when Chloe first introduced us on my first day at Blackwell. I thought it was going to be seriously awkward, and I was worried that I might even be jealous, but I didn't feel that way at all. I just felt incredibly grateful to meet the person who was so good to Chloe when I wasn't around, the person that my best friend called her best friend for five years. I feel glad all over again that I asked Rachel to partner with me for this contest. 
I'm starting to see just how big her heart really is. As I contemplate a reply, my mind wanders briefly back to Richard Avedon and the woman in the mirror. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's, um, I feel like talking about Chloe will make, will like kind of distract attention from us. I know that kind of sounds bad. I don't really know how to explain it like. We want Rachel to be thinking about us, basically, not Chloe. Just for the moment. So let's talk about Woman in the Mirror. I looked up Woman in the Mirror today. Yeah? His photos were so beautiful, almost dreamlike. Did you look at Dov Devima with elephants? Yes. It's interesting how both she and the elephants look so powerful in those pictures, but in completely different ways. Yeah. I love how fearless she looks. These elephants are like stomping their feet around her and she's just completely calm, like a rock in a stream. I'd be terrified, shocked face. Me too. But I'd still jump at the chance. Extreme, Kongon D, smiley face. I'll take the pick for you, from inside an elephant proof cage. It's tongue sticky out face. I don't care if you're joking, you're on. Uh oh. I was going to stop at the cafeteria before coming by. Do you want anything? If there are muffins, yes. Fuck yeah. Gonna put more junk in my trunk too. I'll be over soon, heart. See you. I'm really glad I decided to text Rachel. She's so fun and easy to talk to. I quickly run my gaze around my room just to be extra sure that I don't have anything embarrassing lying around before I lean back on the sheets and relax again. I slide my phone beneath my pillow so that I won't accidentally knock it off my bed and shut my eyes for a rest. I don't know how much time passes, but I'm abruptly brought back to life by a sharp knock on my door. When I open my eyes, I'm surprised to find that it's dark out. I quickly sit up, my heart thumping, and reach up to rub up my eyes and run my fingers through my messy hair before going to answer the door. Rachel's right out there in the hall. She's holding two muffins in front of her chest as she looks me dead in the eyes. Check out my huge muffins. Uh, I see them. Rachel gives the muffins a little wiggle and then she grins, her voice turning insistent. You're not looking. I make myself look, deciding to play along despite my embarrassment. Yes, yes, they're big. Is that what you wanted me to say? I surprise myself by laughing. Rachel laughs too. It'd be funny if they actually, like, animated it. So she was holding muffins and actually doing that. That'd be funny. Yes, thank you. Well, come inside already. Your room is so cute, and so delightfully free of weed odour. The only green leafy thing in here is Lisa. I point at the plant over by the window. Rachel turns to look at it. This is the one This is the one Chloe totally stole and handed off to me last semester, right? Hi Lisa, I missed you. She hasn't forgotten the incident, neither have I. Laughing, Rachel holds one of the muffins out to me and I take it. It smells amazing. I have been... I think I mentioned this in the last video I recorded, which was the ev the Average Everyday Adventures of S Samantha Brown or whatever it's called, and I said that I've been craving a blueberry muffin all day, and so this is kind of torture for me. The Blackwell Cafeteria fare typically never rises above average, but I think there's no such thing as a bad chocolate muffin. I've just had such a craving for a blueberry muffin. Did I mention it was blueberry? I can't remember if I did but a blueberry muffin and just all this talk about muffins is making me hungry all over again. Rachel pulls the wrapper off of hers and picks a chocolate chip out to eat it. The motion looks so delicate that I almost feel embarrassed about immediately stuffing my face. So I've been thinking about this photo. It's got to be perfect. I swallow thickly, just when I'd managed to stop feeling anxious for a minute. I, I know, I want it to be too. It's not good enough to just have a great location, you know? I lower my muffin, feeling queasy. She's right, but hearing it said out loud makes the pressure a whole lot more real. Right, I know. I think about something I'd noticed about Richard Avedon's work. How he treated the background as just one of many elements in his photography, a detail meant to enhance his subject. But Avedon was a master, I'm not. I stare at the carpet. Rachel reaches out to touch my arm. We're going to win this. Nobody else stands a chance. It's practically fate. We can't let doubt get in the way. 
Anxiety takes root in my chest and blossoms. I strain to come up with something to say that won't disappoint her. Um, how can you be sure? I'm not. My heart sinks. But you just said, you ever heard the phrase fake it till you make it? I stare at her. Yeah, I didn't think anyone actually lived by it though. It's actually not bad advice. If you pretend at something for long enough, it eventually starts to feel kind of, well, true. I stare back down at the carpet again. Um, I'm sorry, Rachel. I don't even know how to be fake confident, let alone real confident. If I take a shitty pick... What the hell are you talking about? You keep saying that we're definitely going to win this, but I don't know if I'm... But I wasn't even talking about you. Well, I... Wait, what? I was talking about myself, about me fucking this up for us. I nearly dropped my muffin. Oh. Oh. I think I mentioned this in the first episode, but I love the fact that this is like a gay dating sim where the only characters you can, you can date are the, f I don't want to call them females because that sounds kind of weird, the females, but the girls in the game. And she has a rainbow bracelet. I don't know if that's intentional. It probably is. But I just find it funny. You thought I was talking about you? Rachel's eyes go wide and her expression turns apologetic. She speaks in a rush. Holy shit, I'm sorry. I've been so up in my own head kicking myself over this whole thing. I wasn't trying to put pressure on you. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, that's me. I was so antsy to show you a cool place to take the photo so you'd think that I knew exactly what I was doing. That is what I thought. But with all this shit going on with the contract, I don't know if I can even, like, give you anything worth your time tomorrow. I'm a little stunned. Rachel? You're not the only one who's been in her ho own head and kicking herself. I know exactly how you feel. I didn't want to, like, put you on the spot or anything. I just think your photos are so fucking amazing. The compliment warms me, even through my uneasiness. But that's exactly what I just did, isn't it? I piled a bunch of expectations on you, just like everybody's always doing to me. Rachel has always seemed kind of invincible, like she can handle anything and everything. And she's always proving it. Perfect looks, perfect grades, perfect skill. But she's only human. Maybe it's hypocritical, but there's no way I want to let Rachel keep feeling like this. Hey, Rachel. Yeah? Let's make a deal, okay? Rachel gnaws at her lower lip before responding. What kind of deal? No expectations of one another or ourselves. No pressures, no hopes or plans or anything for tomorrow. We get there and just see how it goes. That's all. There's a moment of silence between us, tense but hopeful. Flying by the seat of our trendy torn jeans, huh? I love that idea. I love it so much I could kiss you. Do it. Now and then I do have a rare moment of genius. You are a genius. Where were you all those times I needed someone to film to speak proper English? Where were you all those times I needed someone to feed me a chill pill? In Seattle, mostly. Rachel laughs. Don't be a smart ass. Smart ass. I believe that having a smart ass may be part of being a genius. On top of a smart brain, of course. Okay, okay, I get it. You're awful. Sorry, just channeling some Chloe for a moment there. Dead on impression, for real. Not hard when all the characters in this game that I'm narrating have exactly the same voice. Rachel glances out towards the window into the moonlight and then sighs. We should both be going to bed soon. We've got a lot to do tomorrow. I nod, feeling a little disappointed. I find myself thinking that it'd be nice if Rachel could stay over. I think I could probably talk with her all night about pretty much anything. But she's right that we both need to be well rested. And anyway, we'll have lots of chances for sleepovers in the future, hopefully. I was pretty much asleep before you got here. I can tell. No offence. You looked so adorably tired when you got to the door. As long as it was adorably. It was. I'll text you tomorrow morning. Feel free to blow up my phone. Be careful what you wish for. I'll straight up explode it. Somehow, I don't think I'd mind bitching. Rachel turns to go laughing. I hold the door open for her as she exits. After a moment I can hear her voice calling from down the hallway. Sweet dreams sweetheart. Sweet dreams.
Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's where I got up to last. If you remember, I said that I played through a little bit of the game but didn't finish it because I had problems and I had to start again. So from here on now, everything is new territory and I have no idea what finished, but I, I have no idea what finished. I have no idea what's coming up or how the game is going to end, but I have a feeling we're quite near the finish of the Rachel Amber storyline. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to end this part here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.